You know you done fucked up, right? Yeah, I'm talking about Iron Fist. The people behind that show fucked up. Uh, finally put Wayne in uh, my thoughts and views and opinions about the show. And I finally watched it over the this past weekend. So, you know, here's my two cents in the pile of the two cents that everyone else has been putting in all over the internet. And it's going to be a mixture of stuff that I liked, stuff that I didn't like, and some of the stuff that I talked about in my previous Iron Fist uh, video before the season debuted, you know, and that I made like just after they had cast Finn Jones as Danny Rand. Um, I want to first start off with how so much of the plot conflict of the first like three or four episodes could have been easily avoided with just some with just some common sense like i mean you start the show starts off with danny rand walking barefoot into rand corporation this you know this super big conglomerate of a business and he's he looks dirty he looks like he stinks and he wants to talk to the guy in charge even though he knows he's been gone for 15 years people aren't going to recognize or know who he is you know, and everybody thinks he's dead anyway. So it's like uh, a little grooming could have gone a long way. I, 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 like, yeah, you've been gone for modern civilization, but you haven't been gone long enough that uh, you know how people with higher social status carry themselves. A shower, a shave, and some new clothes would have helped your situation at Rancorp, you know, in that initial episode. People would have taken him a bit more seriously and granted they still wouldn't believe his story, but you know, he could have also led with telling Ward and Joy things that only they would know about their childhood that no one else knows to try and convince them that he is the real Danny Rand because that would be literally the only way he could prove his identity. Uh, they could have still had the episodes play out the way it did, but it wouldn't have looked or felt so stupid. I found myself yelling at the screen a bunch because Rand just wasn't using any common sense. Um, when he was in the psych ward and, and when it got to the point where the doctor started to believe his story and then Rand starts telling him about a mystical, magical place that he he's only that only he has seen and that shows up once every 15 years. Like, why would you do that? Like, it's not like he was gone from civilization so long that he's lost touch with current society the like i swear the writing in these parts of the show could have been stronger when it came to the plot showing how difficult it is for Rand to be taken seriously i would have rather the psych doc just been a corrupt stooge that was paid off to keep Rand locked up I, it's simple and it's boring and safe but it works a lot better than him just telling people trying to tell people the, the, that he's who he is and not really giving anybody anything to to the contrary um i also felt that they spent way too much time in those first three to four episodes about you know the rand corp ownership struggle you know rand corp was mentioned so much in the show that i swear it should have been given its own character and given lines you know, all that, all that fucking mess should have been resolved within, like, the first episode. Maybe, maybe at some point between, uh, in episode two, maybe even the leading into episode three, but that was it. It, it really shouldn't have gone on as long as it did. And that also brings me to the Meachums. Um, as a whole, I could have just done without that entire family in the show, and I wish the show had gone in a different direction. Um, I don't think they were ever in the comics, and if they were, I'd love for somebody to please jump in the comments and, and enlighten a brother, because I don't ever remember hearing about them, and I felt like they were just really, I don't know, they were just, they were annoying to me. You know, they fought so hard to keep the company away from them, even, even when they started to realize who he was, and, you know, even the sister was the only one who kind of had a conscience, um, and she actually helped him, but it wasn't until after they'd done all that foul shit to him. Uh, the brother Ward, he was just an, 
he was just a, he was just a terrible person and i've been seeing comments online of people liking the ward character um and i don't know why you'd like the war like the fact that he did all the shit that he did is why people liked him you know they tried to cite the fact that he uh you know he he had a roller coaster type of character development arc but everything he did and that and they also tried to say that he redeemed himself or he was doing some that when he started doing like good guy shit near the end of the series that in a way that kind of redeemed him and i'm like no that doesn't really redeem um hit that doesn't really redeem ward because he tried to kill danny twice and everything he did was for himself it was all self-centered uh he's a character who you're not supposed to like because he's a despicable person he even says he's an asshole and a dick he says this himself in the show i'm sure he had his little drug issue and i and i get that the character was a bully he was a bully as a kid who grew up and ended up being bullied you know by his dad and he's a fraud essentially because everything all the business moves that he made that made him look so good and so uh so on top of things was from his father working behind the scenes telling them what to do so you know he had so he even he realized you know he's not who everybody thinks he is and you know i get and and, and once you realize all that shit it's really not that deep and he's just really a, a shitty person like all this uh adoration for and rooting for the bad guy i'm starting to get sick of the of most of these people out there who are down with that shit i mean like i remember i remember people talking about heisenberg in the breaking bad show and how much they liked him and how basically that character's become a pop culture icon but you're really not supposed to like heisenberg like you're supposed to like him at first because he went from a guy who was just trying to help his family out before he died to basically becoming the crystal meth version of Tony Montana. And, you know, at some point you're supposed to really start to dislike this character because he's a despicable human being. And with with Ward Meacham, you were never supposed to like him. And, of course, with uh, Harold Meacham, you, obviously you weren't supposed to like him because he was just an evil manipulative abusive son of a bitch so you weren't sad when he got when he finally died the second time and got burnt you know so that he they burned his they burned his corpse so he wouldn't come back at all so you know i i just i really wish they would have focused on other aspects of danny rand's origin other than the meachams i feel like so much focus was spent on these characters that i feel were practically made up just for the show when you have all we have other characters that you could have brought in uh like shang chi or maybe even um you know maybe even uh, uh misty knight at some point but you know i just uh i just didn't care for the meachams at all and i also uh but i will talk about one thing i did like and that was uh the character of claire um, it seems like all the Marvel Netflix shows seem to get that character right. And just like in Luke Cage, they gave her character more to do. She's not just there to kiss the heroes boo-boos and make them feel better. She's a voice of reason. And, you know, to some extent, to some poorly choreographed extent, she can actually handle herself in a fight. Um, I like her. I like her character more and more with each with each uh one of these which each, each new season of these shows um I, I like the fact that her she's always tied to characters with superpowers she always ends up it's kind of like her own dumb luck that she runs into these people with powers and then she ends up feeling that she needs to help these guys like they need somebody in her corner and she they need somebody in their corner and she's kind of stepping up to take that role i i just i dig this character a lot um it, you know, there was times though, especially when she was training with Colleen Wing in the dojo, that I was like, "Damn it! Why couldn't this have been Misty Knight? Why wasn't Misty Knight there training? Because I really want to see Daughters of the Dragon happen, or or at least them get together and form the Nightwing Investigative Agency." Um, 
you know that they that they did in the comics but uh I overall I really liked Claire Temple I really liked Colleen Wing um I you know I barring uh, issue I'll get to in a little bit with her character I thought she was another strong female lead I really liked the fact that she had this conflict of interest with her following Bushido but also you know delving into the fight club ass um you know fight club scene to get money to keep her dojo open and you know not accepting money even though it was very tempting for her um to keep her dojo open but you know sticking with her kind of to some extent sticking with her code and uh i i like the little conflict that was there with her with dealing with that and obviously with uh her and the hand even though she never joined the hand in the comics and i don't know why they decided to do that for the show it's just one of those changes that they made in the show that i don't really think works you know i'm all for changing certain story aspects for or certain character aspects or plot um points or plot details in a show or in a in a movie you know from the source material as long as it benefits the story overall like with civil war everything that was that they changed in Civil War was actually for the better. Um, they actually made the movie better than the comic book. I felt so with, but with Iron Fist, it seemed like some of the, a lot of those changes that were made weren't to the detriment of the show. It actually, I felt hurt, harmed the show more than it did any good. And her being part of the hand, I think, was part of that. Um, I did laugh at the line when uh, she's trying to explain to Danny about how you know their version of or the hand that she's with is about as being a force of good and helping people get off the street and stuff and then danny's like what are, are you seriously telling me that there's a good hand and a bad hand and a bad hand like that that's stupid as fuck like you sound stupid right now and that that whole that whole scene made me crack up just because of that that was like one of those few bright spots where the writing actually either you know got the response the the correct response from the audience or from me at least when i was watching it um i did dislike the fact that they didn't show kun lun in depth you know i was really looking forward to seeing those flashbacks or seeing his story told from when he crashes and gets rescued by the monk and his basically his uh his mighty whitey ascension to becoming the iron fist um I think more than likely they chose to only talk about those uh, issues and show very sparse flashbacks because it served a dual purpose of saving the overall budget for the show and not having to so visually bla be blatant with the Mighty Whitey trope, which unfortunately is part of the character's comic book origin. So, I, I mean, they would have to address it in some way, shape, or form. Um, I just felt like like i said in my in my iron fist netflix video i said that they that they should really make him struggle and barely come out on top to show that you know it's that he's not just breezing through all this you know all his fights if, if he wins it's he wins because he barely edged out the other person not because he's just so superbly adept and more adept than anybody else has ever been at learning martial arts and becoming the protector of Kunlun. But anyway, speaking of tropes, that was the other thing I wanted to talk about with Colleen Wing. Um, I really hated the fact that they went with her um, being the love interest for Danny Rand. I mean, it's straight up the mellow yellow trope. And people have tried to argue that it isn't because Danny practices Kung Fu and she practices Bushido, but I'm like, no, she's the female, she's the only female Asian lead in the show, and she's the top fighter or whatever, out of all the other females that were shown in the show, you know, maybe barring uh, Mrs., uh, Madam Gao, because even though Madam Gao doesn't say she does a whole lot, she says she just has, she packs a lot of punch, but regardless of Madam Gao, she's, she's the person that She's the Asian character that in in older films they would have the character fall in love with. Um, 
so there's there's no disputing that i don't care what you say or how you try to justify it or what kind of mental gymnastics you try to do to convince yourself and others that you're that you're correct and they're wrong this is the trope they followed the trope to the letter and i think the show i think they didn't need to go into that direction i think the romance angle was totally unnecessary especially in the comics because they're they're great friends in the comics and they never had uh, any kind of romantic engagement in fact i think she was the one that ended up introducing um misty knight to Rand, danny rand and then it was a wrap after that because they got together uh honestly you could have easily taken the romantic angle between them out of the show or out of the plot and it wouldn't have affected either of their plot de um, development at all everything in this everything that happened to them could have still played out the way it did without the romantic angle it totally wasn't necessary and uh i feel like they just they didn't care about trying to subvert all of these negative uh these negative aspects of of iron fist basically um i also felt that the hand in the show they just didn't have the intensity that they did in daredevil i mean in daredevil they were actually pretty intimidating and scary you know whenever they showed up it was guaranteed that person or peoples were going to die <laughs> uh the fact that daredevil would barely scrape by every time he fought them and the fact that they were able to like you know they were able to like basically silence their own movements it, if it wasn't for them actually using weapons on daredevil and daredevil having to hone in on the sounds the weapons made because they couldn't they couldn't mask that daredevil would probably be dead um that that was his saving grace and even then he still had he still had to work hard to fight them off um you know he barely scraped by every time he fought them and that to me that showed how serious of a threat they were uh, in iron fist they lacked any of those things that made them so antagonizing as they were in daredevil the hand recruitment hq looked like a college campus uh they explained that there are factions within the hand that don't get along and and it would have been easy to explain away that the division of the hand that Pakuto is in charge of is more of a societal business infrastructure, um, infrastructure infiltration spy network division or whatever that specializes in information gathering or corporate espionage, resource acquisition, etc. Because you know they didn't, they did not look like. The stone cold killer ninja clan that showed up in daredevil and in fact that would have actually made the hand more interesting to me rather than them just being the the cannon fodder bad guys for the defenders to fight or for you know characters related to the hand to fight it would have given them a bit would have given the hand as a as an entity a bit more depth because ninjas actually like modern ninjas or you know or in feudal Japan actually did that stuff. They actually infiltrated, you know, the hierarchy and the uh, the shoguns and the daimyos and all that out there um, during feudal Japan. They were the people that you least expected to be ninja. They were farmers. They were, you know, labor workers. They were concubines and mistresses. You know, they were put in areas where they could easily gather information or manipulate information out of people and then report back to whoever it is that the ninjas work for. Um, so having the modern day version of that uh, portrayed in, in, these net, in this Netflix series would have actually been pretty cool. Um, I just feel like they had a good idea and then just didn't really take it anywhere. It was just there for, uh, for you to continue Danny and... Um, and Colleen's plot, basically. So, um, I like the fact that they hid in plain sight because that's something, you know, real life Shinobi did in real life. So, um, wish they had done that a bit better. Um, but what I, I really want to also talk about the martial arts overall is just, it's, it's barely whelm. I mean, you come to these types of shows 
like a, a, a Iron Fist show that you know is going to be about martial arts because it's it comes from that martial art movie craze from the 70s and any martial art movie you go to see you essentially go to see it to watch the fight scenes um you know and the story you know the stories and sometimes is secondary to the fights to the fight choreography and here if anything if the if the show wasn't going to live up plot wise to the expectations that the other that the other netflix shows have met and that's not and that's and then other netflix shows have their issues too they weren't perfect either um this show just had more problems than the other shows uh but with the fight scenes you really needed to handle that like professionally they really needed like i said in my previous video they needed to hire a really good action director um i would have personally went after the guys who do into the badlands because all those fight scenes are really really nice um i would have or i would have hired there's a plethora of hong kong action directors out there that you could have picked for from you know it, depending on what your budget is to actually choreograph these shows um i found out from a friend of mine that i guess they rushed production because they took so long casting Danny Rand that they didn't have enough time to spend on the fights. And I mean, it obviously shows because like I said, these fights are just barely whelm. Um, the action sequences, they lacked any kind of complexity, although they do definitely have Iron Fist doing Kung Fu. It's just that the movement feels slow and it just lacks any kind of energy. Um, if they had like slightly undercranked the film during the fight scenes, that would have went a long way to making most of the majority of the episodes look more energetic. Uh, this is why I say they need a Hong Kong action director. One of my favorite choreographers ever is Sammo Hung. I talked about him in the previous video and he actually used to use that technique in some of his earlier films. They would move at a slower speed um, during the recording but since the re since the tape was since the uh, since the film was recording in a slightly undercranked um, slightly undercranked manner, all those slow movements looked a bit looked a lot faster without looking like everything is in fast forward because they moved slower on purpose during the during the shooting of the choreography. So all the movement was looked quicker on film than it actually really was but it didn't look so quick so fast that everything looked stupid they could have easily did this for iron fist and gotten away with it um since everybody moves so slow and everything was so telegraphed um i don't i just don't uh i don't get why i, I mean they, they just they just chose the wrong they chose the wrong group and uh, one of my subscribers a, long, a while ago had told me that um, I guess the people behind the action sequences or the, some of the same people uh, that work on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And I didn't want to tell him at the time, but when he told me that, I was actually really disappointed because I don't think the fight sequences are that great in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. It's only when they have any kind of, whenever there is any kind of imagination or 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 any kind of dope action moments is whenever they have... Um, Ming-Na Wen's character fight uh, Melinda May. Whenever they have Melinda May fight because she's supposed to be the fighter of the group. So whenever she fought, it actually was kind of cool because um, they actually kind of went out of their way to make her look really dope fighting. But everything else was just kind of paint by numbers, kind of blase for uh, for an action show. Um, the action actually doesn't get decent until like episode 10 and, and when I say decent, I mean it went from barely whelm to just whelm. The, the, the Davos and uh, Danny Rand, when they fight all the hand people on the campus at the HQ, at the recruitment HQ, that fight was actually, um, that fight was actually pretty good. It, it, it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't that great either. It was just like, I was just like, oh, finally, something decent to see some decent fight scene to see um the fight when uh the fight when uh davos colleen and iron fist are fighting a couple of hand flunkies and bakudo that fight scene was actually pretty good because they were able to actually 
they were able to actually properly cut the camera when they needed to double Danny. So there were parts of that that worked. Uh, the fight with Colleen and Bakudo was okay. It could have been better. Um, some of the wire tricks, the couple of the wire tricks they used during their fight in the rain was, uh, I don't know. They, they, once again, they needed an action director to direct them to how, how they should look when they're jumping in the air. They kind of just kind of braced themselves as they were up in the air, thinking about the landing more so than actually acting like they were trying to throw land killing blows against their opponent. Um, it just, it, this is just one, when you see it, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's just one of those things where they really needed an action director to, to, uh, tell them how to, how, what they should be doing and visualizing in their own heads, how they should be looking when they're doing some of these moves. Um, the, uh, Iron Fist versus the Drunken Master, which was, uh, oh, what's his name? Um, Louis Tan, the guy who originally auditioned for um danny Rand, but got rejected um that scene to me was a huge letdown i think it was a waste of of tan skills because he does have some martial arts skills oh i i feel like if you're gonna do a drunken master style fight scene it's gotta at least try to meet the bar that was set by jackie chan and drunken master 2 Hell, if it was even as good as anything Jackie Chan did in the first Drunken Master, I'd be like, I'd give it a pass. You know, I'm not saying you have to do exactly what Jackie did because I haven't seen anybody since that I can think of that that did the whole, that, that played up the drunken aspect of that style up as much as Jackie did. Like, that's literally the best representation of that style that I've ever seen. Um, by anybody in a movie. I've seen people in exhibitions do a really good job. Um, but as far as movies go, I haven't seen too many people do what Jackie did in Drunken Master 2. And I feel like they could have they could have taken it there, especially with uh, with with a guy like Louis Tan. Um, they just really it just really overall all the, the the swing off balance movement of the drunkard combined with the technique it just would have went a long way to making those scenes look a lot better i really wish since i knew they weren't going to cast lewis tan as iron fist i really wish they would have brought him in as shang chi in fact if they had gotten rid of the meachums and their whole their whole plot arc and put shang chi in their place the show would have been so much the better for it um, just overall, there's just, I mean, I could nitpick more and more and more, but I really want to keep this video short and I've already talked way too much about why I don't like this show. There's so much more that I could go into, um, but I'm going to just leave it at that. These were my really big, uh, gripes with this show overall. Like, I feel like. I feel almost like they watched my video and I know they did it, but I feel like they watched my video because my previous video, because everything I said they should do that would make the show great. They totally didn't do. And then everything I said that they shouldn't do, they ended up doing, <laughs> you know, especially when it came to the, uh, stereotypical, stereotypical, uh, you know, somewhat racist tropes with Asians. They went ahead and did anyway. And it, in a way they kind of doubled down on it so um it's just too bad because this was really a missed opportunity to do another take on a on a film genre because you know a lot of the marvel movies and you know some of the netflix shows are kind of like their own take on a genre film like ant-man was a heist movie uh captain america winter soldier was a spy thriller, spy action thriller. It's kind of the same thing with uh, Civil War. Um, uh, Jessica Jones is kind of like a take on, well, it's kind of got elements of film noir in there with the detective private eye gumshoe angle and it kind of being a little dark and noirish. Uh, Luke Cage had elements of black exploitation films in there. Um, and Danny and Iron Fist could have easily been their take on a modern day, you know, kung fu movie. It, it, 
they could have easily went that route and it and it would have really helped the show have its own identity as far as right now it just the show just feels like it's a it feels like it belongs on the cw <laughs> you know it with with the forced romantic scene or romantic scenes or plot and just all the drama between the characters and you know the soap opera is almost a soap opera-ish with between Danny and the Meachums. It, that's what it really feels like is a fucking soap opera, not a not a kung fu movie or kung fu TV show. So you know that's gonna pretty much do it. Um, you know if you got any comments, I would love to hear everybody else's thoughts on this. So feel free hit me up in the comments section. Uh, hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already and. I will catch you guys on the next episode. I'm Agent No and I'm out. Peace.